Great Britain is often referred to as the birthplace of railroads since they invented the locomotive, with its technology soon spreading to various other nations thanks to the Industrial Revolution. One nation where this technology prospered in particular was a former British colony known as America, whose expansive rail network and legendary locomotives would become the standard of the world. Although their passenger rail influence would later be lost to automobiles and airplanes, with almost all passenger engines being produced by foreign companies, America's freight industry always remained strong, with their freight locomotives being exported around the world for their reliability and strength. This American domination of freight engines would even spread into Britain, as an unlikely switcher would spur an American-based freight engine revolution in the nation that gave the U.S. its railroads. Improving on the art of locomotive design, the United States was one of the first nations to introduce the diesel locomotive, a worthy successor to the venerable steam-powered engines. Only a decade or so after their introduction in the States, dieselization would soon spread to all ends of the earth as more efficient and reliable power would bring forth a new era in railroading and vastly different locomotive design. However, the diesel era didn't entirely consist of their own designs in some nations, with many nations basing their engine designs on American models, and most of the time outright importing American diesels. One of these instances of American importation happened a bit later in the diesel era, as a four-axle American switcher would be imported by a small British quarry for testing. Said engine was part of the successful SW1001 series, a four-axle switcher which saw success in many nations built by Electromotive Diesel, or EMD, one of the earliest and most reliable diesel builders in the world. Said quarry was Foster Yeoman, who was looking for a reliable heavyweight shunter to haul limestone trains through the loading bunker at their tour works in Somerset, also known as Muirhead. They turned to the US for an off-the-shelf proven type, and even though they intended to buy two engines with one as a maintenance spare, the MD convinced the company that they would only need one, since the SW1001 model was exceptionally reliable. Yeoman agreed, and they received the American Switcher in January 1981, numbered at 44, and named it Western Yeoman II, since the original Western Yeoman name was given to a British Rail Class 52. Some of the features the locomotive has that differ from its American counterpart is its front buffers, white rims, lack of handrails around the engine, ditch lights on the front handrails instead of above the radiator, a silencer box around its exhaust sack, and a protective cover over its radiator vents. Even though it was considered small by American standards, the shunter was too large for the British loading gauge, or maximum height, and it remained at Muirhead for its operational career. But news of this switcher traveled quickly throughout Britain, as the engine rarely broke down and was well favored among crews, especially when compared to the aging and unreliable British engines performing similar tasks. As a matter of fact, it was the fantastic performance of 44 and the relatively poor reliability of their long-distance engines to carry freight out of Muirhead that led the Yeoman to ultimately return to EMD after winning the bid for replacement long-distance engines in 1984. Based on the reliability of 44's EMD 645 Prime Mover, EMD offered the Class 59, a heavily modified variant of the successful SD40-2 with a stronger variant of the EMD 645, and was low enough to meet the British loading gauge, thus being the first mainline locomotive not to be built by a British company. This initial order of four Class 59s proved to be more than enough for the little quarry, as this led to other British power companies to purchase their own Class 59s, which later led to the widespread purchase of a similar Class 66, which hauls most British mainline freight since the 1990s. While EMD continued to produce these SD40 variants for British and European clients alike, the unsung catalyst of the American freight engine expedition was still limited to the quarry vouchers at Muirhead, but its service life wasn't entirely monotonous. Soon after its arrival, it was featured in annual Yeoman Open Days starting in July 1981, with the engine being only a few months old at this point. It also visited the nearby Wentley Quarry in the same year, and most notably for Muirhead Quarry's 75th anniversary on June 28, 1998, where in addition to shoving quarry cars in front of train enthusiasts, it was also on the rear of a doubleheader with two BR Standard 9F steam engines. Eventually, Foster Yeoman was acquired by Aggregate Industries in 2006, who gave it an Aggregate logo, as Aggregate continues to share freight service with Hansen with the jointly owned Mendip Rail. But due to the joint ownership with Hansen, 44's influence would also inspire Hansen to purchase their own SW1001 in 2003, specifically Inland Steel No. 120 imported from the US, and was given an identical blue livery, but this time with the Hansen logo. 
Today, Western DLMN the second continues to shunt various stone cars around the Mirhead Yard, albeit under new ownership, but its duties and significance remains the same. Its reliability which led to an American influx of freight engines still goes strong more than 40 years later, as this little known American import continues to serve as history in action and an example of how influential an EMD engine can be. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. Although 44 wasn't the first American diesel to be directly imported to Britain, it was the first EMD import for the nation, and its reliability would ultimately steer the course of British rail freight towards American freight diesels. Considering that this engine almost never left the boundaries of Mirrorhead Quarry, despite the massive influence it has on British railroading, the significance of Western Yaman II not only makes it a remarkable engine, but also an overlooked and unsung trendsetter in a new era of international dieselization. Thank you again for watching. Credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.